Hello everyone, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws again, and this is my second video tutorial in my beginning game programming series. In this video, I will be covering functions and variables and their types. So let's get started. Go ahead and open up Monk, and if you have the code from the last tutorial, you can go ahead and just delete it now, or you can create a new file. Because we're going to be rewriting the main function a little differently. I'm going to be explaining all the little parts and pieces that go into it. So starting off with our function, we have the keyword function. Now, you, now how you know it's a keyword is because Monk highlights it in blue. See? Black. And now it's blue. And now it's black again. Now it's blue again. That's your keyword. So after that function keyword, you want to put the name of the function. In this case, the name is main. After the name of the function you're going you need to put a colon to separate the name of the function from its type and in this case with the main function the type will be int don't worry about what that means right now I can explain it in just a few seconds go ahead and just finish it off with the int type and then the open and close parentheses which I'm also going to go over it in a minute now to close this function block we're going to use the end keyword the end keyword in monkey closes blocks. So the block will start with a keyword like function and then it ends with a keyword end. Anything between the function keyword and the end keyword is going to be executed when the main function is called. And then at the end of a function like main that has a return type, you need the return keyword. And then you need to return a value or variable or expression of this int type and for the main function we'll just put zero what zero all that does is just so that sends that value back to the operating system to let it know to let it know that the program has uh, executed successfully okay now that we got this main function written out nicely we're going to start making some variables to play around with so in monkey to declare a variable the first thing you need is a keyword that specifies where this variable is going to reside. In this case, we're going to use the local keyword. What the local keyword tells it is that this variable we're making can only be accessed within this block that it resides in. It's local to just the main function block. And the first type we're going to go over is the int type, which allows you to store a whole non-decimal number from negative a lot to positive a lot. Trust me, it's a lot. So don't even worry about it. So, and just like with the function declaration, you specify the name of the variable and separate it from its type with a colon. Now you can leave it just like this and play with it down below, or you can initialize it in the same line using the equal sign and then give it a value. In this case, we'll give it a random 14. And now you might be thinking, well that's nice, but it sure would be great if that 14 could be a 1.4. And I've had the same feeling. So what we're going to do is specify another variable that can hold a decimal value. We're going to call it decimal. And separate with a colon. And this type is called float. And we're going to give it a value of 1.4, like we said earlier. Now why is it called float? Well, obviously, because it's stores floating point type, right? <laughs> obviously. Okay, for the next one, you're probably thinking, hey, what's with all these numbers? Why do we got to be using numbers so much? Let's use some letters, man. Let's use some words. All right, dude, let's throw some words in there. Uh, in Monkey, as in most programming languages, the type to store words and letters is string. And for this one, give it an initial value of something like this is a string. And as you can see in monkey, strings are enclosed with quotation marks on both ends. Now the last type I'm going to show you today is my personal favorite. That is the Boolean type. And in monkey, it's shortened to bool when you're writing it out. What the Boolean type stores is just two values. It's kind of like asking it a question. True or false. That's going to return you to true or false. Guilty 
not guilty. In this case, I'm guilty. All right, now that we got these variables figured out, let's play with them. All right, so what we're gonna do, it's up above your main function, shimmy it down, we're gonna create a new function. We're gonna call it add. And this can be a type int. What it's gonna do is gonna add two numbers and give us the total back. After we specify the type, we're going to specify two variables that are going to be passed in to the function and their types. In this case, we're using value 1 for the first one and value 2 for the second one. They're both ints because we're going to be adding two ints together and returning an int. And then we're going to close this function off. And now we're going to create another local variable called sum. And it's just so you can see it a little differently, assigning values to variables. What you do is you put the variable on the left side, value on the right side of the equal sign. In this case, we're just going to add value 1 and value 2, just like that. And then we're going to use a return state, a return keyword, and return the sum. Now, to actually call this and use it, we're going to go back to our main function, create another local variable called sum, just, just kind of so you can see what's going on here. We're creating a new variable called sum that exists only within here. It's not the same as this sum up here. This sum is only within this block. They don't collide because they're both declared locally. Local, local. So now so you can see that you can do fun stuff with initializing variables with functions. You can just call add and notice you don't need to have its type when you're calling it, just when you're declaring it. So when you're calling it, we're going to pass in a couple of numbers to add together. Let's do, let's go ahead and throw a number in there so we can play with it and then add a number six to it. So what this is going to do, send number in as value one and six in as value two. So they're going to add it together to sum and then it's going to get returned. So now that it, now you want to see your results and we're going to, to make it extra nice, we're actually going to change this so you can have a nice proper output add words and sum together now I know what you're thinking you just add a string to an int you can't do that a string is a string it's letters and stuff you can't add a number to that but one thing about monkey is you can don't doubt it embrace it now we're going to build and now you can see the output the answer is 20 this program just, comp well, the program didn't compute anything. The computer computed, as computers do. So, there, that's it. That's functions and variables and types. So, join me in the next one. We're going to go over some nice, nice stuff. All right, see you then. Oh, and one more thing. If you have any questions about programming, monkey, games, anything, you can email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com or you can lay some comments on me down below or you can mess me on YouTube, whatever. Alright, take it easy.